typically how to make simple pasta. Some of you may already know how to make it, but you know, it might inspire you to make something new or just to make more or whatever. But it's very, very simple. Um, so we're gonna start off with just about a cup and a half of flour. And we're gonna add two eggs to it. And I say one tablespoon, but I just kind of, <laughs> you know, guess it a little bit by myself. And then we'll add just a few tablespoons of water to start with. You may need to add more water. You may need to add more flour to it as you go just to get the right consistency. And then I'm gonna add, where'd my salt go? A little bit of salt. Now some of you might not be able to have salt, so either plain or whatever you have for a salt substitute that you might want to use. <clears throat> and then we're just gonna slowly mix it up here. I say slowly, but it looks like I'm doing it fast. <clears throat> and this is where you'll see whether you need to add any more water, which it looks like I do. It's, it's kind of dry and crumbly. Anybody can see that. And it'll get to a point where you put the fork down and you just have to use your hands so it's going to kind of drop it all down on here and then we're just going to knead it by hand for a few minutes and just get all this loose stuff worked into it as you go. How do I know when I've added enough water? It'll, you'll be able to kind of tell whether it's it's too wet or dry to work with. Okay. So if it's real dry and keeps crumbling you're going to want to add a little bit of water. If it's too wet and it's just sticking to your hands then uh, you'll want to add a little flour. So I can do that at this stage? You can do, yeah, you can do it here or, you know, as you're mixing it in the bowl, kind of. Um, like if it's real crumbly right here, I could add more water. Yeah, and I may, add, I may need to right here because it is pretty, pretty crumbly. And you don't want to just Do you ever flavor your noodles? I never have, but I've used food coloring to make them different colors for different things. Um, but I've never, I, I put like salt and pepper sometimes in the, in the dough or maybe a little garlic salt, but for, for the most part I don't normally. When would you do that if you were going to? I guess it depends on like what you're making. Like I'll do it like if I'm making chicken and noodle soup. I didn't do it for the chicken and noodles here, but um, but I've done it for that. Um, would I put in the flavoring when it was in the bowl still? Would you guess? That would be I, I would, yeah, yeah. Okay. Then you just want to keep working it and try to pick up all these little crumbs and kind of fold that into it. You said chimney. That right there filled that crock pot and the No, it's just the crock pot. Just the And about pot. half this amount is what I use for the for the bow tie. Okay. So what's that mat that you have there? It's just a rubber mat so I don't get it all over oh. the counter. It's actually for pizza, right? Well, Barbara. that's what it came with, the pizza. Pastry type thing, so it doesn't stick. So Tim, are you kneading it for what reason? Just to Just to get it? everything worked in real okay. good. And the longer it sits, the more, like, I don't know what the correct term is, but the, the gluten's in it come out stronger okay. the longer you let it sit. Sit um, or knead? What's that? The longer it sits or the longer I knead? Both. Okay. Both. The, the kneading gets it kind of started, okay. and then the longer it sits. Now, you can, I've done it several times, made it up ahead of time, and then I'll cover it in plastic and put it in the refrigerator and then, you know, use it for later, but then you have to let it get warm temperature so it's easy to work with. Mm -hmm. And you may need to add more water and flour to it. It might have been fine when you put it in, but... Uh, Do you ever need that, Tim, where the noodles would get tough? 
I don't think so. I mean, it's possible. I don't. I don't really have the answer for that. So. Um, you said the gluten's come out to want more gluten. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the longer it sits, the more the stronger it is, I guess. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to cut a, a couple pieces here. I'm just going to smash it down a little bit, and then I'm going to run it through this. Does anybody have a pasta machine at home? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, this is a manual one. They have electric ones that you can hook up to, like, your kitchen. mixers, KitchenAid mixer and things like that. But so this is going to be a little, I'm going to just turn the table a little bit so it's easier to see. So this has different settings on it for the thickness. So you, you just want to uh, get it, you know, some people like thick noodles, some people like thin noodles. It depends what you're, what you're making. But then we're just going to run this through. Sometimes it's kind of tough if you got a 250 to go going through. Okay, so now it's got some holes in it. So I'm just going to fold it over again and I'm just going to keep running it through until it gets all the air bubbles in the holes. Okay, if I didn't have that thing, would I just put it in? Demo? You'd use a rolling pin. Yeah, right? and I'm going to do that here in a little bit okay. when I okay. show how to do things, you know, by hand. So. That's easy though. I mean, that's easier than using a rolling pin. Oh, it sure, it sure is. And then, it's got, <laughs> then it's got different settings on it, so you can. Do you know about how much those run? Like if someone was interested they, um, in The one I bought a few years ago was like $25 at Walmart. Um, so they're anywhere from $25 to $35 for a manual one. The electric ones for mixers and that kind of stuff, they can run into a couple hundred, three hundred dollars. So, um, but this one here is, and it comes with, uh, I'll show you real quick here. And that one you got at Walmart, you said? Yes. I actually bought it online from Walmart. Oh, okay. And it comes with different, uh, they call them heads. So like this one is for, you run this through and it'll cut your angel hair pasta. And on this side, you can either do lasagna noodles or uh, ravioli. <laughs> This one here does uh, spaghetti noodles and linguine noodles. So. And both of those came with just the one machine. Yes. Or, yeah, okay. Yep. That's so I tighten this up a little bit, making it because this is too thick for a noodle. And as you're running it through this machine, you may need to just add a little bit of flour to it, just so it doesn't stick. Just through watching cooking shows and things like that, well, I decided, hey, I need to buy a machine. So, so anyway, I'm going to put on uh, the spaghetti head here, and it just slides on like so. So then, and yeah, here, let me cut this a little bit. And it, it, you know, shorter pieces are obviously. And if they kind of, as you're running it through a machine like that, okay. um, if they kind of stick together, then that means you need to just sprinkle a little flour yeah. either on the head of the machine or on your on your actual dough. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of pull here a little bit so everybody can kind of see everybody mm -hmm. see that all right? Okay. Mm -hmm. 
You have to let them dry before you cook them, I guess. Now, <laughs> a lot of people have, have questions about that. Really, it doesn't matter. The only thing you want them to dry for is if, if you've shaped them into something and you want them to hold their shape. But as far as dry, I mean, you dry them, you're going to throw them in boiling water. So what's the point? You know? So it, it, the only thing it does dry them is lets them hold their shape. But obviously spaghetti noodles, the noodles for the chicken, you don't really need to, it doesn't have the shape to it, you know, or that's going to affect anything. So anyway, that's the, the pasta head. So Tim, if I'm not using that right away, that, that, can I, if that's too much, I only want to use half, but I've made it all into spaghetti, can I freeze it? Can I? Yeah, you can, yeah. And I've, I've made up like the noodles for the chicken noodle soup or my chicken noodles, I'll make them up ahead of time and freeze them. Okay. So then I'll and put them in a baggie. But you want to lay them on a kind of cookie sheet, because if you just throw them into a baggie, yeah. wet yeah. like this, you're going to have a yeah. solid block of yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So um, like the Bogota pasta, I did that early, early this morning. Put them on cookie sheets, put them in my freezer until I got home from work, and then I boiled them and cooked them or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is, uh, the other side of this is the linguine noodles, which is basically about what, what I've made there. And then you have, well, see, now it's getting a little sticky now, so, but anyway, um, just, then we also have the angel hair pasta. So if you wanted to make gluten-free, would you do it the same? You just I would imagine you would in different flour and make sure your machine is absolutely clean, that it doesn't pick up any glutens from anything, you know, that it was made for, you know, previously. Can you put the machine in the dishwasher? I never have. I've just kind of wiped mine down by hand. I don't know. I, I would say probably not. Just because it, it, there's parts of it that probably could rust when it's sitting in there, you know, when it's not running or whatever, so. Um, anyway, so I'll just, well, I got some more. So I'll do the same thing here, and I'll just run this through a few times <laughs> to get it flattened out. So everything goes to that side first, and then you add. Then you add the head up, and it comes out on this side. You do this for all your pasta now? Not all of it, but um, a, lot, a large share of it. So, so do you make pizza crust that same way? Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Same, same ingredients. Um, but you wouldn't put it through the machine, of course. No, no I, just, I just use my rolling pin or do it by yeah. hand. So this is going to be the angel hair pasta, and you're, you're going to want, if you have one of these machines and you're doing oh. the angel hair pasta, you need a lot of flour. What's the ingredient there? Because they, they, they will stick together because they're so thin. So the pizza crust is the same recipe that you Yep, use. yep. In fact, I have the recipes right on here for pizza crust, but um, yeah, there's flour uh, other than yeast, but everything else is, is just the same. So run this through. I'm making a mess all over this floor. Okay. So I make it come to me. For some We don't. It's real hard to... Angel hair pasta is hard because it's just so thin to work with. Well, there, you can see it kind of. It just depends on how thick they are. Okay. Um, like it seemed like it took forever for the bow tie pasta that I made uh, to cook. And then it depends too, you know, what, you, what you're making. You know, you might want your pasta to be really done. You might want to okay. have it have a little bit of a, a chewy texture to it. So it just depends. But it's real thin, you know, a lot thinner than 
doesn't really look like, but it's a lot thinner than your regular spaghetti. Um, they also have, you can make lasagna noodles. Um, and, and, and all this stuff, I mean, the spaghetti would be hard to do by hand, you know, to cut little thin strips. But the lasagna noodles and everything else uh, is something you can do by hand. You don't need it. You don't need a machine. The bow tie, did you send that to a machine? No, I do that by hand. Oh, okay. You could though, from hand to hand, just cut. Kind of well, yeah, but you you have to. And then just cut it. Yeah, you're going to want to run it through here and plan it out to get your thickness. If you want to do it that way, or you can do it just with a rolling pin. So, so the lasagna noodles, I'm just going to make the small ones. So. Oh, how do you curl them then? <laughs> well, yeah, they're, they're always. You could do that, and if you do something you like that, I mean, you probably have to use your fingers or something like that. Put and then if you did, yeah. that's that's a time when you would want to let them dry before you cook them so that they hold that curl to them. Mm -hmm. That curl so. not necessary though on the Well, most yeah. Tim, are they double the thickness of that, or do they stay? No, they'll stay, then they'll grow a little bit, but not much. You won't be able to notice it much when you cook it. Yeah, you won't be able to notice it much when you cook it. But, um, hmm. And then you can also, the ravioli is kind of hard to do. Um, it's basically using the same head for the lasagna noodles, but you put one piece of dough laid this way and one this way. And then as you turn the handle, you put your meat or cheese or whatever you're into it and then it comes out and then you just it'll come out in a strip and then you just cut the the strip into whatever you want so basically that's what the machine does so i'm going to go over here now and kind of do some things by hand i'm just going to use this over again and kind of roll it out If it starts, you know, after you've kneaded it a few times and you're using it over and over and over, it'll get kind of rubbery and hard. So you can add a little bit of water to it then, it'll make it a little more pliable. Again, you're just going to roll it out to however thick you want it, depending on what you're making. I'm just going to cut a little piece just to make it a little easier to work with. The flour on it. So what are you making this time? I'm just going to show how to make the bow just, ties. Oh, okay. It takes a little longer to roll it out than it does. So when you've boiled your pasta, do you put salt or oil in it? I usually put a little bit of salt in the water, and then a lot of times, because noodles have no flavor to them, so a lot of times I'll mix the water with like chicken stock, mm -hmm. and just it just gives a little bit of a flavor, not a whole lot, but better than just plain. So I think actually I'm going to run this through the machine just to make it quicker to flatten it out. So now, would you say when it has holes in it, what's wrong with it? It's, it's just, 
air and how it's not put together, but after you run it through a few times, that all comes out of it. And it could be that it's too a little too wet. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of flour to it. <laughs> a little bit of flour. What's and nice that you can kind of play with it to get it the way you want it. Yeah, yeah, and you just either add flour or more water to it, whatever whatever you need to do. Thickness on how it rolls through there? Yes, yeah, so and this one, the other one I have at home it has like four different thicknesses, okay. and this one has seven. Okay. So you start off with the bigger one, of course, and then you just keep yeah. adjusting it, and it's just a little knob right here. Okay. Just pull out, and you can see where, how the rollers are coming in together or not. So, and again, this is just a small piece, but like if you're making like a lot of lasagna, obviously you're going to want a big, a big piece or the bow tie pasta. So I just cut it yeah, in a couple of some couple your rolling pin. What's that? Oh, move I'm sorry. Yeah, let me come over here too. No, you're fine. Um, so basically I'm just kind of cutting them in strips like this and then I have fat fingers so my bow tie pastas look pretty big because you have to pinch them in the center well if I do a little tiny piece I pinch, I pinch the whole thing so um, so you just want to cut it into and you, and you can make them you know as thick or thin as you know or wide or however but basically, this is a little thick, but basically what you're gonna do is just kind of mm -hmm. pinch just in the center of it. Like I said, I have fat fingers. And then if you want to be fancy, you can take a fork and just kind of crimp the ends. <laughs> and and so basically that's all it is. Okay. And then but you want to keep this shape, so you want either want to let them just sit out and dry or put them in the freezer, and then they'll hold their shape as you cook them maybe. If I just went like this and stuck it in there, it's just gonna flatten all out. So um, basically that's how to do that. And then for instance, ravioli, I, uh, you know, you can either do a machine, if you don't, you're just gonna cut a, a couple squares, put whatever, you know, cheese, meat, whatever, vegetables, whatever you wanna put inside it. I've had, I put mashed potatoes and a little bit of cheese in and mm boiled them and ate them like that, or you can put them in the oven and bake them, and it's, it's crunchy. Oh. So, but anyway, you're just gonna put your pile in there and then crimp it all the way around. Yeah. Um, if, if, I would, if I would put little meat in there or, or cheese in there, do I make it cold before I put it in the water? Or do you what? Should I make it cold? Should it come, if I put it in the refrigerator, should I bring it to room temperature? Oh, no, no, you can take it right out of the freezer or refrigerator and put it right into the boiling okay. water. Or I can make it and just put it Or right Yeah, there. yeah. And that's usually what I do. If, I, if I'm making it, I'm eating it right away. So um, once in a while, I do have to make stuff up to have it. So I'm gonna roll this out a little bit and show you how I, cut my noodles for the chicken and noodles. And again, it's however thick you want to make the noodles, so. Now, if you were gonna make a dumpling, would you use this same recipe or not? I would, yep, and that's okay. what I do. And, and a lot of times, like if I make potato soup, uh -huh. I'll make this dough, and instead of, you know, it's, I, I don't have it yeah. kneaded out, or it's just crumbly dough, I just take a pinch of it and drop it in the soup and I got little dumplings like that. Um, if that answered your question. Yes, it does, thank you. So some people are real 
Well, see on how the lights are possible to look and they want to be just perfect. So just to make it easier, I'm just going to cut this into a, just a square, basically, a rectangle. So you can either use like a pizza cutter or a knife and cut your noodles however wide you want them or however the length you got. Or what I found, and this is how I learned from my wife's family, is they would roll it up real tight. And you need a lot of flour on this because it will stick together as you're rolling it up. Can you put some cinnamon on that? That'd be good. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and then basically what you're going to do is just cut this into like little pinwheels. And again, however, you know, if you want them this thick or, or wide or whatever, you, you decide how the width you want. And it looks just like a, a pinwheel. Kind of, it's kind of hard to see, but anyway, I'll do a few here. And you can either you know, sit here and do one at a time, or you can just pick them up and drop them like this and they, they unroll themselves. And then what I'll do is I'll lay them out and then I'll just cut them to whatever length you want. Um, so basically that's about it. But you know, I mean, there's so many different recipes you can make with homemade pasta. I haven't figured out how to make macaroni noodles yet, <laughs> but I, 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 I came up with some ideas and not, nothing's worked. So, um, but you, you know, you can just, you know, you can make macaroni and cheese out, you can make tuna casseroles, I mean, spaghetti obviously, lasagna and all those things. Um, and be creative, come up with your own ideas. And, you know, maybe you'll see a pasta salad somewhere, a recipe, and think, well, gee, I could try it with homemade pasta. So, um, I hope I've explained things. Does anybody have any questions? So, you don't ever have to, like, dry those noodles out, like, hang them and... No, you can, but like I say, the only purpose for drying them out is so they hold their shape when they're getting cooked. But spaghetti noodles and, and these kind of noodles... There's no shape that needs to be, you know, it'll stay like this, but the bow tie pasta, or if you want to make the lasagna noodles have a little curve to them, you know, work with your fingers to make that, then you'll want those to dry so they hold their shape. But if I'm not cooking them right away, like if I made them in the morning and wasn't going to use them until night, I should probably put them on a cookie sheet during the day just to let them... Make your shape however you want it, put them on a cookie sheet, throw them in the freezer. Do I have to freeze them or can I just... You can put them in the refrigerator. But put them um, in the refrigerator. Yeah. Don't let them sit on the counter. Yeah, they, they have... I mean, you can let them dry. I mean, they say that's okay, but... No. I'm funny about that. Okay. It's raw hay. Yeah. <laughs> so, and Ron and Ellen, because the cookie dough. So, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> you I... Turn this green to your coat when Dan So that's, that's one reason that I don't I let them <laughs> sit and dry out. So I usually, if I, if I want them to keep their shape, I put them in the freezer. Okay. And it's all a lot quicker, too, so... But then they would sit, if they were in a bowl somewhere, they'd get clumped up together. Like yeah, so I lay them out in the cookie sheet, and I might have some laid out on, because my freezer only holds so much. So I might have a bunch sitting out on the table. I've got some in the freezer. As soon as they're hard, I'll drop them in a baggie yeah. and put and add more to the freezer, because you don't want to put them in wet. I mean... You always what? make a batch up ahead of time, so you always have some ready then? I do sometimes, but not all the time. Like usually I just make what I'm gonna eat. So, um, and then of course, you know, if you're making a lot like lasagna, you're gonna have to double this recipe. And, you know, it's you kind of, you just gotta figure it out, you know, how much you really need to make, so. Um, so now when you get done with those and you, you cut them and, and you boil them, mm -hmm. 
how long do you boil them? <clears throat> it depends like, how thick they are, and I, I just okay. test them. I just I just pull one out and if, if take a bite. And I, yeah, like yeah. the bow tie pasta. It's a little more firmer because I didn't yeah. cook it as long, but I, for my cold salad, that's how I prefer it. But, yeah. you know, you can do it however you want to do it. So So then, so I'm done boiling it, and then do I drain? Drain the water off? Do you put cold water rinse or not? I, I do just to stop the cooking process, and, uh, and then just rinse it off with cold water, and then hmm. put them out wherever you want, you know, if you're going to put them in the freezer or whatever, or eat them or whatever. Um, it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. What about the chowmin noodles? Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Okay. Um, I don't have any spaghetti noodles left. So you can do this with just regular spaghetti you got at home that you buy at the store or with your homemade. The oriental noodles, like for chowmin, mm -hmm. the little brown, crunchy ones, all that is is a, is a spaghetti noodle fried in grease. Mm -hmm. And they'll turn brown, and then you know, so you can break them up ahead of time, you know, in yeah. size pieces you want, throw them in the hot grease, let them cook till they're brown, and huh. and you can even do that with you know, even you know, like the bow tie pasta, you could put those in in the hot grease and have a little crispy bow tie for a snack. Yeah, put like, a little seasoning on it. Like Grandma Mercedes had, she made it like spicy hot. Yeah, seasoning. yeah, you can put whatever you want. She would do it like the bow ties and make them in the grease and then put like chili powder and stuff on them. So you got a little snack to munch on. But there, there's just so many things. Um, and, you know, you just got to be creative. Think, you know, or look at recipes, I guess, whatever. But I, I try to be a little different. Try to make, I've tried making shells. Um, those don't work out real good. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but, you know, for basic stuff and like I say, it's a simple recipe to do, and it doesn't take that long. I mean, just in a matter of 20 minutes, I made, you know, several different things. So it doesn't take that long to do. And um, like I say, you can make the dough up ahead of time, put it in the fridge, pull it out whenever you're ready the next day, two days later, whatever. And it, but just let it sit warm temperature, room temperature, till it's warm enough to work with. You might have to add more flour and water just because it sat in the refrigerator, so. Um, but basically, that's that's about it. And then, if you wanted to make it a color, when do you do your color? I do that while I'm mixing it up by hand. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, your hands will get dirty unless you got gloves or your hands will be stained. So. Um, Cost effective? Do you think? Would you say it's cheaper or it runs about the same as buy it? Well, it's probably about the probably same. You know, yeah, by the time you you know, in yeah. a couple but of days. You're right. No preservatives. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And things are always better, homemade and fresh. <laughs> you know, it's just the way I think anyway. But uh, yeah. But yeah, this it's so many different things you can do with it. So but like I say, if you don't have a machine, you know, you you can improvise with a knife or a pizza cutter or whatever. Um, Would people be able to come up and check out the machine? Sure, sure, yeah. Anybody come on up and feel free if they want. And, or, and actually I can roll out a little bit of dough to get ready and you can try it if you'd like. Uh, so would you get cut on that or do you have to stick your fingers in it? You'd have to stick your fingers in it. And, uh, I mean they're not sharp, just a... No, no, I, you can touch the blades, they're not sharp, they're just... <laughs> a child for um, Actually... <laughs> so this is the spaghetti not one. For six feet yeah. oh. but, but it's not sharp. <laughs> Oh yeah, just kind of. Yeah, and it's just two rollers makes that it. they go together. Oh. So. Oh. <laughs> I think I might try it. My hands are gonna get close. Oh yeah, I can try it by hand, I think. But the machine's sure nice right there. Oh yeah, this saves a lot of a lot of muscle. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Does anybody want to come up and just try it and try to, to make something? Oh, I'm on. I'm good. Okay. Do you do a cooking thing once a month? Is that used for broth? Um, thank you. Okay. So again, it's, it's flour, olive oil, salt, water, and eggs. Oh, hey, I, I do have a question. Sure. Could you use, you know, like at the brick kitchen, they have all those different kinds of oils? You can use whatever oil you want. You can use vegetable oil. I just, and that would give you your flavor. Yeah, like garlic. 
Yeah, which would give it some flavor. So yeah, that, that's a good, good question. So I don't know if anybody heard that question, but you can buy different flavored oils. You don't have to use olive oil. You can use vegetable oil if you want, but you can buy different flavored oils, which would help give it this a, little, a little bit of a flavor. So. And the Burke Kitchen has. Yeah, they have lots. Yeah. Yeah. So. Good taste. Yeah. Oh, good. So if okay. there are no more questions, I appreciate everybody coming tonight and. Uh, Hopefully we can do this again maybe sometime. So. Yes. Oh.